I've always been a giver. From a young age, I found joy in helping others, in being the person people could rely on. It was a role I embraced wholeheartedly, a shoulder to cry on, a listening ear, a source of comfort in times of distress. I was always there, ready to support those around me, always ready to lend a helping hand, whether it was assisting with a task, offering advice, or simply being present. My days were filled with acts of kindness and support. It's in my nature to nurture, to uplift, to put others' needs before my own. I found fulfillment in seeing others thrive, in knowing that I had made a difference in their lives. But over time, I realized that my constant giving was leaving me feeling depleted, like a well running dry. The energy I poured into others was not being replenished. I poured my energy into everyone and everything, leaving little for myself. My days were a whirlwind of activity, always focused on others, never on my own needs. My spirit, once vibrant and full of life, felt heavy, burdened by the weight of everyone else's needs. The joy I once felt in giving began to fade, replaced by a sense of exhaustion. I knew something had to change. I couldn't continue on this path without losing myself completely. It was time to take a step back and reevaluate my approach to giving. This realization was a turning point in my life. It was a moment of clarity where I understood that in order to truly help others, I needed to help myself first. It led me on a journey of self-discovery, teaching me the importance of balance, boundaries, and the often overlooked power of saying no. I began to explore ways to nurture my own well-being, to fill my own cup so that I could continue to give from a place of abundance. I started practicing self-care, engaging in activities that brought me joy and peace. Yoga, meditation, journaling, these became my tools for replenishing my spirit. I also learned to set boundaries, to communicate my needs and limits to those around me. It wasn't easy at first, but with time I found that people respected my boundaries and appreciated my honesty. As I began to prioritize my own well-being, I noticed a shift. I felt more energized, more present and more capable of giving in a meaningful way. My relationships improved and I found a deeper sense of fulfillment. This journey taught me that giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin. To be a true giver, one must also learn to receive, to accept help, to take time for oneself and to recognize one's own worth. Now, with a heart still full of giving, but a cup no longer empty, I continue to support others. But I do so with the understanding that my well-being is just as important as theirs. And in this balance, I have found a deeper, more sustainable way to give. My journey is ongoing, but I am grateful for the lessons learned and the growth experienced. With each step, I strive to maintain this balance, to give from a place of abundance, and to live a life that honors both myself and those I care for. A giving heart and a full cup. This is the harmony I seek, the path I walk, and the legacy I hope to leave behind. Have you ever felt like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders? Like every step you take is burdened by the expectations and demands of those around you? Like your energy is constantly being drained by the needs of others? It's as if every call, every request, every task chips away at your spirit, leaving you feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. This feeling, my friends, is a sign. A sign that your inner self is crying out for attention, for care, for a moment to breathe and recharge. It's your spirit telling you that it's time to reclaim your power, to take a step back and recognize the importance of self-care, of nurturing your own soul. When we constantly prioritize others, neglecting our own needs, our spirit suffers. We give and give until there's nothing left, and in the process, we lose sight of our own well-being. We become depleted, our energy reserves running on empty. Just like a car can't run without fuel, we can't function at our best when we're drained. This can manifest in feelings of resentment, frustration and even burnout. We start to feel like we're failing, like we're not enough, and this only adds to the weight we carry. We must remember that we cannot pour from an empty cup. To be there for others, we must first be there for ourselves. We need to fill our own cups with love, care and attention. To truly help others, we must first fill our own cups. By taking the time to recharge, to nurture our own spirits, we become stronger, more resilient and better equipped to support those around us. So take a moment today to breathe, to reflect and to fill your cup. Your well-being is the foundation upon which you can build a life of balance, joy and fulfillment.
Think about a time when you said yes to someone, even though your heart screamed no. How did it make you feel? Drained? Resentful? This is your spirit's way of telling you that your boundaries have been crossed. Learning to recognize the signs of spiritual depletion is crucial. Do you feel physically and emotionally exhausted, even after a good night's sleep? Are you constantly irritable or on edge? Do you find yourself withdrawing from loved ones? These are all signs that your spirit is crying out for attention. It's time to listen. Saying no can be difficult, especially for those of us who are naturally inclined to help others. But remember, saying no to a request is not selfish. It's an act of self-preservation. It's about honoring your own needs and limits. When we say yes to everything and everyone, we spread ourselves too thin. We become like a candle burning at both ends, our flame slowly flickering out. Saying no allows us to conserve our energy for the things that truly matter, for ourselves and for those we love. Section 5. Boundaries, the guardians of the soul. Boundaries are not about building walls to keep people out. They are about creating healthy limits that protect our energy, our time and our emotional well-being. Think of them as fences, not walls. They define our personal space and allow us to connect with others in a way that feels safe and respectful. Setting boundaries is a powerful act of self-love. It's about recognizing that our needs are just as important as everyone else's. When we set clear boundaries, we communicate to others that we value ourselves and our time. Section six, saying no without the guilt. One of the biggest obstacles to setting boundaries is guilt. This guilt often stems from a deep-seated fear of rejection or the desire to be liked by everyone. We are social creatures and the thought of someone being upset with us can be incredibly distressing. We worry about disappointing others, letting them down or appearing selfish. This worry can be paralyzing, making it difficult to assert our own needs and desires. It's important to recognize that these feelings, while valid, should not dictate our actions. But remember, you are not responsible for other people's feelings. Each person is responsible for their own emotional responses. By setting boundaries, you are taking care of your own mental and emotional well-being, which is crucial for maintaining healthy relationships. Start by setting small boundaries. These can be as simple as saying no to a request that you genuinely cannot fulfill. Over time, as you become more comfortable with asserting yourself, you can set more significant boundaries. If a friend asks you to help them move on a day you already have plans, it's okay to say, I'm sorry I'm committed that day, but I'd be happy to help you another time. This shows that you value your own time while still being considerate of your friend's needs. You don't need to over-explain or make excuses. Over-explaining can sometimes make you seem less confident in your decision. A simple, clear response is often the most effective. A simple, no thank you, or that doesn't work for me right now, is enough. These phrases are polite yet firm, and they convey your message without leaving room for negotiation. Remember, saying no is a skill that takes practice, but it's essential for your well-being. Reflect on your experiences and learn from them. Each time you say no, take a moment to consider how it made you feel and how the other person reacted. This reflection can help you improve your boundary setting skills over time. Ultimately, setting boundaries allows you to build more authentic relationships. When you are honest about your limits, you attract people who respect and appreciate you for who you are. This leads to deeper, more meaningful connections. Plan your time wisely and prioritize your own needs. By doing so, you ensure that you have the energy and resources to be there for others when it truly matters. Remember, self-care is not selfish. It's a necessary part of a balanced life. So the next time you feel guilty about saying no, remind yourself that you are doing it for your own well-being. Embrace the power of no and watch how it transforms your life for the better. Section seven, the art of assertive kindness. Setting boundaries is not about being rude or aggressive. It's about communicating your needs clearly and respectfully. Assertiveness is about finding the balance between honoring your own needs and being considerate of others. It's about speaking your truth with confidence and compassion. Remember, you have the right to say no without feeling guilty. You deserve to be treated with respect, and that includes respecting your own limits. Section 8. 
replenishing the wellspring. When we constantly give without replenishing our own energy, we become depleted. It's like trying to drive a car without ever stopping for gas. Eventually, you're going to run out of fuel. Make time for activities that bring you joy, that fill your cup and nourish your soul. This could be anything from reading a good book to spending time in nature, to simply enjoying a few moments of quiet solitude. Self-care is not selfish. It's essential for maintaining our physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. Section 9. Self-respect. The foundation of kindness. True kindness begins with self-respect. When we respect ourselves, we are more likely to set healthy boundaries, to say no when we need to, and to prioritize our own well-being. Self-respect is the foundation upon which we build healthy relationships, both with ourselves and with others. When we value ourselves, we attract people and experiences that reflect that value. Section 10. The freedom of saying no. Saying no can be incredibly liberating. It frees us from the obligation to please everyone, to be everything to everyone. It allows us to focus on what truly matters, to pursue our passions and to live a life that is authentically our own. When we learn to say no with grace and confidence, we open ourselves up to a world of possibilities. We create space for new opportunities, new relationships and new experiences. Saying no is not about closing doors, it's about opening new ones. Section 11, a life of balance. Living a fulfilling life is about finding balance. Balance between giving and receiving, between work and play, between caring for others and caring for ourselves. It's about recognizing that our needs are just as important as everyone else's and that it's okay to prioritize our own well-being. When we live in balance, we create a life that is both meaningful and sustainable. Section 12. The true meaning of self-care. Self-care is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It's about making a conscious effort to nurture our physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. It's about listening to our bodies and giving ourselves permission to rest, recharge and rejuvenate. Self-care can be as simple as taking a few minutes each day to meditate, to read a good book, or to simply enjoy a cup of tea in silence. It's about making ourselves a priority, not because we're selfish, but because we deserve to be well. Section 13. Join the journey to eternal stoicism. Are you ready to break free from the chains of people-pleasing and embrace the power of setting healthy boundaries? Join me on this journey of self-discovery and learn how to live a life that is both kind and empowered. Subscribe to my channel Eternal Stoicism for more insights on cultivating self-respect, setting boundaries and living a life of purpose and fulfillment. Remember, you are worthy of love, respect and happiness. Start by giving yourself the greatest gift of all, the gift of self-care.